before we start looking at cross sections, and we are going to look at cross sections going from the back of the medulla, the spinomedullary junction, all the way to the junction of the midbrain and diencephalon, let's look at the external landmarks. And we're going to start right now with the, the ventrum of the brainstem. So this is, again, an isolated brainstem. What's been cut off is the cerebrum. The whole forebrain's been cut off. The other thing that's been cut off that we'll look at in a minute is the cerebellum. So all we're looking at is medulla, which is right here, pons, and midbrain. And actually, there's thalamus, but we're not going to talk too much about thalamus. OK, so first of all, let's, let's notice that the pons is very noticeable on the, on the ventrum. It's this bulbous uh, it's, uh, base. It's called the basis pontus, or the, um, the pontine nuclei. And this is the part of the pons that got married to the cerebellum. And in animals that do very fancy movements, the pons, the base of the pons, and the cerebellum both are larger. We do lots of uh, fancy movements. In particular, we pay, play the piano. We can make individuated uh, finger movements. And because of that, we have this large basis pontus and a large cerebellum. And we'll look at that, we'll look at the cerebellum in a minute. But this is very noticeable, whereas in, for example, a rat, it's a much smoother thing. It's less, much less bulbous. OK. So the medulla, as we said before, this is one important uh, landmark, the spinomedullary junction, where you see this, this blurring of the midline. And rostral to that, on the ventral surface of the medulla, are these two areas right here. And these are the pyramids. This is going to contain the corticospinal tract. At this level, the corticospinal tract is controlling movement on the opposite side, the contralateral side. Just lateral to the pyramids are these two bump, bumps, and these are called the olivari, olivari tubercles, and underneath them are the inferior olivary nuclei. These are the cells that are going to tell the cerebellum when a mistake has been made. They are the teaching signal to the cerebellum. Once we get into the pons, we have smooth sailing. The corticospinal tract is going to go shooting through the base of the pons. And then it's going to enter, in the midbrain, the middle part of these cerebral peduncles. These cerebral peduncles are where a bunch of tracts are, are concentrated. And in the middle third of the cerebral peduncles are the, um, is the corticospinal tract and the corticobulbar tract. Okay. Now, the other thing that you notice here, as we, as we go forward a little bit into thalamus, you notice here the optic nerves. Remember cranial nerve two. They're coming from the eye. The eye is here, the eye is here. They come back, and there here's the optic chiasm, and then axons that deal with the, the contralateral visual field are going to be present right here in what's called the optic tract. And what you'll notice is the optic tract is going to bend around the cerebral peduncles. And so that gives you a, that, that's one, one thing that you already know. Uh, you, can, you can understand at this point, this very early point, which is that you could have a damage here. And what would it produce? It would produce a contralateral paralysis. You couldn't voluntarily move the contralateral face or body coupled with a loss of vision in the contralateral visual field, OK? So if you damage both the cerebral peduncle and the optic tract, that would be the result. Okay. Now we're looking at the dorsal surface of the, of the brainstem. So now the, the boundary between the spinal cord and the medulla is less clear. Uh, what is still clear is the boundary between the medulla and the, and the pons. And that is clear because you see these two cut surfaces. These two cut surfaces are where we took the cerebellum off. And these are called cerebellar peduncles. This is the cerebellar peduncle, and this is the cerebellar peduncle. They are made up of, there are three different 
uh, tracks within the cerebellar peduncles. But if you cut this, that's it. That's the only way to get in or out of the cerebellum is to go through these peduncles. That is absolutely the attachment of the cerebellum to the pons. And so what you see is that where this, uh, where the attachment is, that's the, the pons. So caudal to this is the medulla and rostral to this is uh, it, actually as you go forward, um, the midbrain would start right here. Why does the midbrain start right here? Because the midbrain is marked by these four hills or colliculi. This is also called the uh, quadrigeminal plate. So this is a, a, an area of four hills. And the two hills in the front are the superior colliculi and the two hills in the back are the inferior colliculi. The superior colliculi are involved in orienting movements to unexpected sounds, uh, 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 unexpected um, uh, movement or unexpected uh, tap on the shoulder, anything that is unexpected and you orient towards that stimulus, that orientation movement is supported by the superior colliculus. The inferior colliculus is, uh, is a necessary um, uh, part of the auditory pathway, but for reasons that we will discuss later, we're not gonna dwell on the auditory pathway at all, so just so you know. And what you see just behind the inferior colliculi is this lovely little nerve. That is the trochlear nerve. It's coming out of the dorsal surface of the midbrain, and it's going around to exit from the ventral side. So, medulla, pons, midbrain. What's right there? What's at the very front of the midbrain is the pineal gland. Remember, this is a non-neural structure. It marks the end, it mar marks the, the boundary between the midbrain and the thalamus, and it, it comes off of the, the dorsal um, surface of that, that boundary zone, and then it sort of folds back and it nestles in between the, the two superior colliculi. And going forward from here is the velum interpositum, that place of, of not, part, not part of the brain that is uh, encircled by the comb over of the cerebral cortex, okay? And then this is the thalamus. So now in the next section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look a, a little bit more at the cerebellum, which, we've, we, which we have ignored in this, uh, in this section. Okay, great. <music>